in this video today is February the 6th 2022 I welcome you to this program uh, will not concentrate however on MK Ultra proofs proofs about my being dropped up brought from the US or taken from here to some other part of the world in this video instead I will concentrate on my own family I'm gonna concentrate on Udba people I'm gonna concentrate on underground assassination circle group professional killers from greater Chetnik state previously known as Yugoslavia uh, you're talking about people with officially issued state ID such as father from Melania Trump let's say Victor Knaus let's say you're talking about the people here the neighbor here Miroslav Berger you're talking about Milan Kuchan of course you're talking about Borut Pahor talking about Slovenian people around here and you're talking about a lot of other people that have had enormous impact on my family as well uh, within my family what can I say they committed a big mistake when they got against me uh, mainly for the reason that on both sides of my family uh, my grandparents participated and even brothers and sisters from my parents participated in national resistance fronts they took the side of the partisans during the world war ii uh, the liberation front therefore they fought against nazis that's the main reason why they made like a really big mistake with this and then the second one then that has something to do with me because regardless of of how many beatings abuse torture uh restless days and nights i had spent being subjected to the torture uh beatings abuse psychological abuse like you don't even believe what a stuff i was guilty threatened death threatened on several continents uh it took no less well now it's the 28th year that i am wasting on uh alerting the world about this case thanks to united nations which officials well, i think maybe probably all of them were involved in this stuff but otherwise it took 25 years of this ongoing torture uh i'm not gonna forget the day when i fall asleep in my mother's uh bedroom we were both watching tv i was next to her sometimes in 2017 and no that was in 2015 then the neighbor Donna Collins came and mother went out and he went and as I woke up and I heard he went inside and looking at me and went out back and forth it was like crazy and then the next thing you see you disappear basically in the evening time no I just um this is just so rotten this family that uh is just um impossible to describe this stuff in this case in this in this issue here from the neighbors here to my family um this is just really really unique these are all the pcr tests that i have done this is just a test to prove that i never had uh suffered from COVID. 19 all along and this one in particular refers to the date as you see right there is December the 6th 2021 that was my actually fourth examination that I took fourth examination that I took and these are the examinations you need uh so that you can enter inside of the stores 
because in the shopping centers they require them they require to prove that you're negative that you don't have that you don't you didn't test the positive for uh, a COVID-19 and of course on my fourth time in my lifetime I never took any of this before yeah uh, right in front of the shopping center here in Coolandia uh, just as uh, one promised me the case would be was my sister that was my sister that was involved in MK Ultra in beatings in torture boy she was actively involved in these beatings in this torture for 25 years here and there whenever the chance opened uh, for the sake of her daughter uh, since I'm gonna say I'm gonna, gonna reduce this a little bit and I'm gonna go to the year like 98 because uh, it appears to me that's basically all right 22 years uh, that it was her daughter Urška Weber Golop that had a final uh, the biggest impact on her and of course the job she was employed at the Kirka Pharmaceutical the company Slovenian company uh, which would hijack me abduct me load me on a trucks on a plane and deliver me to Belgrade to Moscow to Belarus whatever they wanted the market to open to expand basically so the beatings could took place and finally they had me all over the factory where they were engaged in beatings in abuse um, I, I this is just a place where my mom my father my dad they all were involved uh, they all worked all their lives the three are retired from this pharmaceutical company uh, the pharmaceutical company in fact was even started the Kirka pharmaceutical company was started by Boris Andrianich a personal friend of my father who with several people along my father uh, would just wow this is really a great man this is a big man um, he could do without my father he could do without anybody uh, he was the one who commenced this company it just happened so that yeah my father was there too and uh, he helped as much as he possibly could have uh, he became his employee and that's how this Kirka pharmaceutical company grew uh, from nothing from a little home pharmaceutical uh, company from from a low from a pharmacist from a pharmacy home pharmacy basically into a giant company that employs over 5,000 people I think now uh, mainly in Slovenia however they also opened in Russia uh, and they also have in something also in Poland and uh, I understand also in Serbia and so on and back and forth but anyhow this is about my own family this is about my sister in this case uh, his name is Biserka and I find this extremely <sighs> disturbing facts that my sister throughout her life did not embrace a Roma community for one thing she along her husband that's Branislav Golob would suffer considerably like entire community would suffer co uh, considerably from uh, phobia from uh, some kinds of uh, different approach that was developed in a socialist republic Yugoslavia uh, toward the Roma community uh, he's talking about very discriminatory practices uh, practices that would not 
give this community the opportunity to uh, get involved basically in a normal life, in a normal uh, current stream, and just basically as the case was all over the Europe. It was not really just this country here that this would be like uh, isolated, something like this. Uh, this is the same thing that you have going on uh, all over the continent, uh, maybe especially, I'm going to say, in Russia. Maybe Russia is about the far the worst one because it's the kind of country that cares about uh, issues whenever this is convenient for one. Currently, it's not the Roma community that is subjected to the racism the most, but the Asian Russian uh, minority definitely is under Vladimir Putin. Basically, whichever way the wind blows, that's how it goes in Russia, in modern Russia. But when the Russians came here, it was the most important to find anything that would be wrong with this system here in Slovenia. So they even understand uh, father, children, Shoigu did. Shoigu did inside of the settlement, inside of the Roma settlement here in the Novo Mesto. Uh, it was also, I understand, some Americans that, that would uh, stop there and so on. So it was a great concern of them, uh, this Roma community, to portray me in as much as negative light as possible, as a racist and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, these, are, these are just the connections that I already have indicated today on the internet uh, are related to some other human rights movements in the United States of America, such as Black Lives Matters. Uh, it's not only in the United States of America, but the phenomena surfaced also in Brazil, based on what I have seen. I did publish the news today here. You're talking about the news here. And it's something I was warned about. Do not even try to connect a black racism. This is not social justice. Uh, this is a racism. This is a supremacy. This is what this is. Do not even try to connect this with Milan Kuchan with Borat Pahor, because then we are screwed. I don't know who the fuck is we, because the one who told me this kind of stuff eventually was a Buckingham Palace which financed the crime against me. The Britons financed the genocide, the extermination of me as a native, as a Slovenian native, because they did whatever possibly could have done to accommodate Vladimir Putin. They had every reason to engage people from this very village against me and the family of mine against me too. So, when it comes to my family, these are completely fake. These are, folks, these are completely fake human rights issues. These are not uh, the human rights issues when I am, but I am actually quite really, really, have I really, really not published this stuff? Um, if I have not, I'm going to publish this stuff right now. If I somehow did not, then I must immediately correct this mistake and make sure that It would definitely appear in my news site because we wouldn't want any other we want this news site to go out we want this to be seen I did publish this why somebody is changing of course I did publish this stuff why somebody is changing this stuff 
Why somebody is taking this stuff away from me, I do not know. This is the mom, and under the mother, uh, I have actually even posted a comment today. I'm not dumb not to remember what the fuck I did. I posted a comment that... Okay. We're just gonna... We're just gonna do it like this, and we're gonna highlight it, this stuff here. Okay, we we don't we don't believe in this kind of human rights. We don't believe in this kind of human justice. We don't believe that for the cost of ruining person 28 years of life through the torture, through the killing of the individual, restless nights, ten thousands of death threats beatings, abuse all over African continent, United States, Eastern Europe. We don't believe, I don't believe, South America in this case, I don't believe that I am going to go in the knee in front of George Floyd supporters for the cost of stated here. They have lice on their hands. They have U.S. government. They have Washington, D.C. They have corrupt U.S. They have corrupt United Nations officials, but I managed to get physical proofs about the existence of MK Ultra. I got facts together that these people engaged with maliciousness, with intent to murder through the instruments which indicate highly as supremacy, basically through the world of lies, through the media, clearly through the torture, through the beatings, and without having a single proof in real life for me being discriminatory toward other races, minorities, literally through the word of lies they have created on the ground, supported by the psychiatry in Slovenia, involving even people from abroad, Chetniks from Serbia and so on. I have the proofs. They have lies on their hands. They have blood on their hands. Blood of the innocent. This is basically why we're going to do it like this. Okay, in this case, as I stated, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and numerous times before she started to date, a Roma individual, there was a Roma individual here, from Novo Mesto. It's a settlement called Zabiak. In this settlement, in this Zabiak, I had no effing problem. And he knows. He can actually tell about this. I think his name is... I already did publish on my new site. It really doesn't matter. He's got a Serbian last name. Not probably that even this would be the last name of this Roma individual. Uh, Roma people, some selected Slovenian last names, and this guy just had, for whatever reason, uh, Serbian last name. For me personally, because I am really not a racist, and the Roma people eventually even know about that, because I like their girls, women. Uh, we are Indo-Europeans. The Slavs are Indo-Europeans. Uh, we came from India, from northern part of India. We immigrated a long time ago to the Europe. Uh, it wouldn't even bother me if his name was Kumar, let's say. Uh, if, he, if they had the original Indian name. Uh, I like diversity. I like the culture. Uh, Slovenian people do have this last name, Kumar. My teacher had this last name, Kumar. Uh, but he had a Serbian last name, and as much as I didn't, I didn't care about him in 97. It must have been in 97, but I think it was in 96, actually. You had a Serbs here, Milosevic, 
Karadzic, Vucic delegation, they came here from Belgrade, and they did go to visit with the Ruskis this settlement, this Zabek, uh, because they literally play on discrimination notes. I don't know whether their teacher came from the U.S., how all this stuff, these social warriors, this uh, human rights warriors wanted the case to look like, uh, but I didn't give a shit about this guy being Roma guy, but when he said uh, a Serbian name, it was, it was for me, it was like, like this. It was like you would turn the match on because since 95 and in 96, since 95, the neighbor here, Miroslav Berger, was driving me to Serbia and to Bosnia inside of the tunnels, inside of the front line tunnels, in front of the front line ditches where the Chetniks would exchange fire with the Bosnians and with the Croats. Then he would also take me for beatings, for more beatings to Serbia back and forth. It was the time where Miroslav Berger was introducing his own son, Alish Berger, uh, the little apprentice into the world of Chetniks, basically, so that he then, once the Papa would get, I don't know, afraid or tired, uh, could or did not have time or whatever could take me further down to Serbia and to Bosnia. He had a special horse in Croatia in case he would need like Petrinja so that he would go to Petrinja. There was nothing other than beatings over there, torture, man. The Serbs over there in Petrinja, this is like, I have no idea. It's like unique. It's it's unique on, on, on a criminal scale. They are unique. They are so violent, they burst from the violence. And it's, again, I'm not going to go into this is problem from Croatia, but I'm just saying that uh, this is this is this is a world of violence. This is where you go from house to house and you have like well, the one who paid them a solidarity next to taking me to the Serbia for beatings, for abuse, were Slovenian people here in Slovenia. Here, there were settlements where I had participated violence against me from house to house. Uh, they would be next to people from psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polia, psychiatrists, uh, people who assisted psychiatrists, that they would condition people, the locals, with the jobs, with, the, with the employment, uh, with the social status, with existence, within community, by engaging in crime against me. No beatings, no death threats, no fucking job for you. Uh, later, Borat Pahor came up with a list uh, where he would give the list to the villages, the people that would write their names down. And so they would, whenever they would get me, do their little shit so they could get projects going, money from the state, jobs and stuff like this. This is the way it was in Slovenia. So uh, let's just go back to this issue of this Roma individual. This Roma individual, he knew it, that what he did was wrong. Even the Roma individual that, that, that they're classified in Slovenia like, uh, you know, like they don't fucking know what they're doing. He knew very well what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> he knew very well that what he did in 96, when he said that, 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 that he's going to have, I don't know whether he's going to have a Serbian name, that he gave himself in 96, the Serbian name? I think, yep, I got now even deeper. The man in 96 have chosen for himself a Serbian name because I didn't like Serbs. And so, or it was like this, or it was a Vucic Milosevic who have selected him uh, for the police career. They, once individual 
volunteered for the crime. It was the window of opportunities that opened for him. So this poor guy volunteered himself that he's going to do abuse. Uh, and for the cost of that abuse, the system uh, gave him a badge, a police badge. They schooled him, whatever they did, and he got a police badge. Uh, I don't know when. In 2005, I think, he permanently transferred to Ljubljana. But it wouldn't go without his kids knowing about me. He did maintain uh, a bed. This is to say that the Roma people are not Catholics. Roma people are just as Catholics as anybody else's. They're just as Catholic as anybody else's. His children took upon themselves his curse. And sometimes in 2015, I was brought here again to this Zabek settlement, and I see this kid talking to me, uh, and he liked me. And it didn't make no fucking sense to me. What What is it this one wants now? This is a young kid, and I'm looking at this. Uh, participants, what what do they want from me? What are they talking about? This this guy that that he's gonna help me and stuff like this. I was like, whoa, said, what is this guy talking about? Uh, and it was actually his child. They opened the door for him. Also, he became a very positive young personality here uh, in this region and I really do salute this this is nice to have a young people uh, like this this is a really example but really his father you know uh, who became a police officer he didn't forget the moment in 96 and so yeah when he said this Serbian name it clicked to me all of a sudden he no longer was a Roma uh, he was uh, something else for me. From the moment that he said that Serbian name, that he's going to do this uh, for the Serbian stuff like this, he was just nothing other than Chetnik for me. That's all there was. And we have many, many run-ins afterwards. He wanted to convince me. He had, whether I like it or not, once he accepted this crime, he had to uh, step up on and add more and more and more and more and more abuse as much as possible to this case of mine. Uh, psychiatric Ljubljana Polia Hospital uh, completely uh, like displaying me completely dysfunctional um, based on fear behavior from Slovenian psychiatrists alone. Slovenian psychiatrists were like this uh, because they had within the system, they brought the Serbs inside, they have a Serbian psychiatrist inside uh, from the Udba times and from the top of the state, Milan Kuchan sitting on them with Borat Pahor. Uh, I would say that psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polje alone was traumatized, afraid. So the psychiatrists from Ljubljana Polje, they just, you know, displayed this kind of uh, totally characteristic for somebody who is diagnosed with mental illness uh, signs, yeah, like, like based on completely like fear, you know, like a fucking fear. Like, when they were terrorizing me, they're going to come to pick you up at any moment, at any moment. And they were fucking afraid, too, that for not complying, they're going to be looking for the jobs for the rest of their lives, too. That's how they got everybody engaged in crime against me, basically. So, this man, regardless, I don't know, something bad happened, I think, I don't know, in 2004 or whatever. And uh, it was it was just nothing other than abuse for like eight years. The follow up uh, through this guy against me on what uh, I never gave in, and run-ins with me were more and more violent. Eventually, he got transferred to Ljubljana. 
uh, at his own request because it became too evident between him and me. But he would not let go. He would still, he still remembered uh, exactly what happened in 1996, basically. And this is how it goes. Uh, as far as my sister, this is weak. This is just difficult because you had the family that didn't align to Roma people. They did not dare to Roma people. It's, it was a community in Yugoslavia and always was community that the Roma people were not desired. But they were not desired anywhere in Yugoslavia anyways. They're not desired anywhere in the world anyways. And so, shockingly, when under MK Ultra, uh, my sister eventually started to date a Roma individual. She started to date a Roma individual. This was the second man who got involved in MK Ultra. It was also a Roma guy who met me here in front of the postal office. Uh, the other day, I also have written about this, a second Roma guy. Uh, he was not. He was not so. Uh, he was not so violent. Uh, he he was just trying to understand me. Uh, who also couldn't come to conclusion that I would be uh, discriminatory against one because one actually kind of resembled a lot my friend Simon. And at times I had a problem uh, changing him for Simon actually that that was that was weird but at times he did some really stupid stuff it was some torture involving this stuff to abuse uh but you know this is just job related if you don't you don't have a job in slovenia this is just the way it is the precondition for you to get ahead for you to have employment is just a filthy job a filthy work that mr milan kuchan and board pahor condition not only people a whole community with. If you're not going to cooperate with us in kind, therefore, you're not going to have any future. It goes like this for the whole village. It goes like this for the whole fucking city. They would leave behind if they would not comply, basically, with a crime against targeted victim. If you already know, want to know what exactly political uh, targeting is, if you want to know what uh, blacklisting, stalking, mobbing and stuff is all about, that kind of stuff, MK Ultra, that's what this is all about. That's how it went here. It go, it went like this for 25 years. Not everybody did go along, and uh, individual you're going to hear in this uh, video, eventually was uh, audio, translated for you, eventually was wasted. My sister took a very radical stand, uh, went on to bully some locals with this shit. Uh, she got for a co-worker a Russian. They brought from the Russia, they put inside of her lab a Russian. Uh, and she brought from job home here from Kirka Pharmaceutical here inside of the room uh, other co-workers especially this Martina you're going to hear about uh, with a car that she's going to sell who would engage in a torture against me. Make no mistake, these people are all uh, completely confused about who the fuck I was and that's a question why for my parents, for my sister uh, is I never had a problem with the women that's a crazy shit, that's a bad crazy shit I never had a problem it the whole thing is just really weird because I never really got to hate partisans so I don't know how the fuck is it possible to be a Nazi without hating uh, national resistance front um, and I have seen in United States of America this crazy insane stuff when my boss when I worked for the Kent security uh, in Fort Lauderdale, uh, actually North Miami Beach, was insane. And this guy would just, like myself, he went on and he 
dated the black lady, but he had this Nazi signs on him. It didn't make any fucking sense to me, this stuff. Uh, I couldn't understand any of this shit. No, I did not end up with any tattoos, with anything like this. But I think if I would stay in this land of the free, uh, I would say land of crazy, really, I probably too would develop this kind of demented, uh, crazy behavior and bizarre stuff. And uh, maybe like, uh, what's this guy was, uh, Charles Manson uh, or whatever would walk around maybe with a swastika on my forehead and stuff like this. Crazy how they could, through physical abuse, beatings in front of partisan memorials, memorials dedicated to partisans, uh, crazy how they can um, incite you through the lies, basically telling you that you're not Nazi yet, but based on the beatings and lies and one and left and right, uh, and then from there on straight into the village and back and forth, you will become one. Uh, and actually, involving the people that were involved in MK Ultra on a large scale through this also human rights organizations, through the hatred, how this hatred from beneath can actually penetrate on the surface, how they manage to actually pull this stuff out with a human being, what the fuck they can do with that. For that matter, uh, when you're doing a Nobel Prize, when you're giving a, a Nobel Awards in Oslo, uh, in Norway, I think you should, you should award United Nations uh, officials such as Pedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus maybe uh, or maybe Antonio Guterres with uh, you know for a successful cover-up of lies for the torture of the people for incitement basically and discrimination in racism in a division of the society and a cover-up in a fuck-up of this world basically so next time when you give this awards please think of these people at UN and you're going to find many other interesting names that I came across when subjected to torture, when drugged up, and uh, give them, give, hand them out this stuff, will you? Uh, so yeah, this goes to December the 6th, 2022. It really does. Well, here's the date. It was the fourth time I came to have this examination, exactly the fourth time, and uh, there, voila, uh, they repeat this scenario from MK Ultra. My sister pops up, uh, and a few other weirdos, and off we go. We try to incite again in hatred against the Roma people, try to wake up all this stuff. I suppose, I don't, I don't know, to just turn as much as possible society against me uh, by turning me basically against society. I don't do this, uh, but when you go inside of this house at nighttime with idea to murder, to radiate, to gas, then I'll say fuck no to my neighbors here too in this village. That kind of a village, uh, that kind of a practice, that's when I'm going to step out clearly and point out the finger against you. That kind of a stuff you're not going to be doing. You're not going to go and tell. Uh, like they started to spread around how everybody in the village has a COVID-19 and at nine time they fucking go inside here and uh, poke in my uh, through the holes in the sleeping pillows and fucking radiate me here at night time and stuff like this so that I could get open heart surgery stuff. That's shit you're not going to be doing. That kind of a stuff you're not going to be doing. That's when it stops. Uh, but other than that, I hope only the best for the Roma community. I think they are wonderful people. I met also in uh, in a Poland. I met also in, they met me also in a Czech Republic. And uh, they even offered me money for the bus ticket 
they invited me to eat with them on one occasion because of one Roma family I'm really sorry for in the Czech Republic uh, they're very forgiving people they had to do crimes to get the house um, furnished to get the house uh, you know uh, remodeled um, how do you say renovated maybe uh, improved they would even because it did I did hurt a father in the process he was very emotional uh, they did invite me inside their home and embrace me and so on so this is definitely not my enemy, but the family like this, that they have to do this stuff with the friends that come inside of the household, uh, which they brought nothing but a hatred, incitement, open incitements, uh, with idea to obtain a feedback from me. A hatred feedback. They wanted to get some kind of, just like you're gonna hear the sister right now, they wanted to get the feedback from me that uh, they could use to uh, basically label me like, you know, this guy does hate uh, Roma people, he is a racist after all, and this and that. Uh, like I said, uh, it's going to be about that. This is not going to be the only about my sister, about my mother. I'm not going to even go because I have thousand recordings like this. She called me a gypsy, uh, told me on numerous occasions that I should just go to gypsies, that I live like a gypsy, them shit, and I don't know what uh, animal. And the biggest protest of them all was when I returned in 2006 from the United States. And there was a Roma family here also at the Smolenia Garden and so on. It was a whole fucking crap because I was nice to people and stuff like this. It was a fucking protest here. They they piled literally on top of my head uh, because of this shit. Uh, incitements in a hatred by a family members in this family are a frequent. Uh, incitements uh, against others that are afterwards followed by the lies against me, such as that I was supported from Anders Breivik, lies against me that I wanted to exterminate the entire Slovenian nation, lies against me, and so on. Numerous lies uh, are just a main, were and are just a main weapon of Milan Kuchan, Bord Pahor. But yeah, it's staggering to notice that this involves the closest family members. Again, today is February the 6th, 2022, and let's go to the audio recording. Uh, this is not isolated uh, incitement in hatred. There were many other incitements in hatred by my sister, done by my sister upon return from United States of America. Um, it would be on every occasion, whenever she would meet me, she incited in hatred against a Roma minority. At the same time, whenever she engaged in sex with a police officer, Roma, with a Roma background, with that's basically with a second police officer, um, she would be just... Uh, completely laxed in uh, her place at her residence uh, it would be like make yourself like a master of the home like a husband basically and I had to participate this type of uh, you call this shit whatever the fuck you want for me personally, it's sickening. It's sick, actually. Uh, and, you know, this is the type of stuff that's been used to incite in a hatred. 
in a chair right next to us while sitting at this restaurant. There is another female that was involved in MK Ultra. There was quite a few people that popped up that day that engaged in a violence during MK Ultra. That's basically what they do is they make their presence, they make themselves visible to remind of the violence done against one. And then they pull a dirty trick like this uh, so that they can trigger a response they want from you. And she was sitting right next to us. I think that was an undercover police officer. The audio recording itself dates into December the 6th of 2021. Greatly reduced in size. There was some talk about the dog she had. Yes, she had a dog. Her name was Atara. And this dog she was also using as a weapon against me under MK Ultra because people have used all kinds of dogs, also huge dogs, big dogs, pit bulls, and you know, German shepherds. All kinds of dogs were used under MK Ultra to terrorize, to scare, to traumatize, to kill, basically. And her dog. Schnauzer, although not that big, was the most vicious animal probably I have seen, trained pretty much to attack whenever the dog would see me. Now that dog, if that dog would not be on the leash, the dog would just go after me basically as soon as one would see me. That was the craziest dog I have ever seen, although I have never made an aggressive move toward one so um, she would buy the holster inside of the car if I would only approach the car and stuff like this and try to make a contact with the dog this is my sister basically this is about my sister we are talking about my family so we're gonna talk about that kind of stuff I must also say that almost every second person I would meet outside on the street whenever I would go for a walk upon return from Poland. That was for about a year, would incite in a hatred against the Roma community, against the Roma minority in Slovenia. Everywhere I would go, whether I would go next to the river or I would go walk in some place, wherever I would be, it was nothing than incitement in hatred against the Roma community. So much about Borut Pahor, Milan Kuchan is politic in Slovenia. Let's go to the audio recording. This is my sister now. <laughs> Oh, Are you gonna go to the store today? Uh, she says she's. I'm just gonna go to the local spa here to the store. I'm gonna get the sausages. Like I said, this this is reduced version of audio. Uh, she would like to go on a coffee. She's saying she wants to go to the coffee, and I said. Also, I have no intention to go to no coffee. I don't want to go to no coffee. But this is where she had this female police officer. Aha! Let me explain about this kind of stuff. Whatever crime they have committed, which for whichever crime they have committed, they always have created two scenarios. One was the attack scenario from which they anticipated they would get results. That's basically angry feedback from me which they did manage to get for quite some time uh, I cannot even imagine what they have done to me basically how I looked still 
till 2017. I cannot imagine. Uh, I had not seen myself a poor bastard like this yet, that would not drink alcohol, that would not consume, uh, not even coffee. I started to consume coffee for the first time in 2012. That's when I started to consume coffee. Uh, before that, I never drink coffee, not smoke a single cigarette, nothing. Basically, addicted to a health, to a normal life, to everything that normal person should uh, crave. No alcohol, no drugs, no nothing. And when I think what these people have done to me, wow, that is just amazing, right? So for one step is what they want you to follow. That's basically unlimited torture, beatings, incitement in crime. They have used Roma community, some Roma community members, as I stated, just like everybody else, have participated in this, did not have, I'm gonna say, choice, whether you want it, especially, you know, there's one thing about this stuff against the women, and against the Roma community, um, against the people that are the most vulnerable within the society, I don't like going against. Because it's the people that are the most, that are exposed the most, that are the easiest, the group that are the easiest to manipulate. But then you have other people, like business people with a lot of fucking money and stuff like this, uh, that most of the time they would condition people with this stuff, with the crime, with the jobs, uh, lending money, all kinds of stuff, you know, like this. And then you had the politicians that would condition uh, the business people and so on and so forth. But, you know, the business person I'm thinking about right now, that's a Chertelich, that had a president that conditioned the politicians in Slovenia. That was actually from Serbia. But that, yeah, let's leave that alone. Let's go to the audio recording and let's hear this stuff. So yes, for everything, they have an exit scenario. In this case too, the lady next to us, I think it was a police officer involved in MK Ultra uh, that also engaged in torture. So this feedback should be for me extremely emotional, angry, um, you know, pro-Trump, something like that kind of feedback. You should have been seeing me bitching against minorities in the U.S. already a long time ago. And you know, it was a weapon that the Black Lives Matters movement had in their hands. They were well coordinated. They well knew absolutely everything about what went on, how to play on this song. They know they know absolutely everything. So you would go to the coffee and uh, and uh, she says, "Yes, let's go." This is this is something like this. It's very sweet, a lot of fat. It's a it's a calorie bomb. That's uh, she said. Come on, I I treat this, uh, I treat you, and so on and so forth. So this is basically we did the testing right, and now we are waiting for the results to be released because it takes them about like few minutes to get results. As a matter of fact, I think at this point in time, we already got the results. And so now I should have gone my way, do my stuff. Uh, but I say, okay, since if you go, want to go to this coffee, she invited me, uh, then I'll go and I'll give you a company. Uh, 
I tell my sister, okay, listen, if you're gonna pay for a coffee, I'm gonna have a coffee with the cream, I go with you, I'm gonna give you a company, okay, let's go. And she says, yes, yes. She also insists me that she recommends me this, uh, this kind of uh, sweets. These are a really good sweets, but I don't know how you say this in in an English language. I have actually not even seen stuff like this in in the U.S. This is Slovenia, uh, quite famous for. This is like probably maybe like a native here specialty. Um, a really good stuff, but really this stuff. I think this stuff is coming from Vienna. Slovenia used to be part of this Austro-Hungarian Empire for a very long time and so I think that this is the stuff that comes actually from Vienna because Vienna in Austria uh, I think that's a queen of the world when it comes to sweets I don't think there is anybody in the world that would have when it comes to cakes sweets and stuff like this I think that can possibly match anything like what they have or whether they have probably the best pastry I should say probably even pastry, yeah, pastry. The best pastry in the world, I think. My sister says, after I tell her I went out for a walk and I'm going to go purchase some stuff in the stores that she also brought something. Okay, she keeps insisting on this, on this, um, on this sweets I presented you with and I said no, no, thank you very much, no. Are you gonna drink something? You're gonna have a juice, you're gonna have what what would you like? I said I don't even know what kind of coffee do they have and she says uh, I'm gonna have a cappuccino. I tell her, listen, actually, I went over this menu and um, I see this, this is quite expensive. I have these drinks, this coffees, this stuff. And I tell her, you know what, I don't want to make her bill actually. And so I say, you know what, you just, you just uh, have yours, you, you finish yours. You're gonna have yours, and then that's all. I'm not gonna have anything. Yeah. But she insists, and I said, okay, then I will order something. She says, uh, on my asking her, what are you gonna drink? She says, cappuccino. Oh, 
I tell my sister, you know what, please don't bother with it, I am just going to have a tea, that's all there is, a little tea I'm going to have and that's all there is to it, no, should they give me a menu, uh, and under MK Ultra, they told me you're gonna have a choice. You're gonna be, you can go for a cappuccino, you can go for this, you can go for that. <laughs> I don't know what you can go for, but I figured out the green tea probably could really be good for me. By the way, this here, this is a son of a Roma gentleman I have spoke to you about, and his last name is Stojanovic. And I think it was exactly 1996, more likely, most likely, that his father took the name Stojanovic. So he changed probably the name in most likely what I believe was the year 1996 to from whatever name he had to the name Stojanovic I think and if that is just not the case then it's that other scenario when you had Alexander Vucic, Milosevic, these people Russians in this Zhabiak settlement uh, they had me participate and They chose him over his last name, Stojanovic. And, you know, this is now his son. It appeared to me to be a very nice son. Uh, concerned for me. Something I really, really found place in my heart. Because I was really, I, I didn't know how could a Roma guy be interested in me like you know helping me out i didn't i i was like completely confused why that would be the case i mean how where who i was like who are you now what do you want you know and did not give me the explanation but his father told me that he's going to give me a sign you know this this is just his son who was nice with me uh, and I just didn't understand what this guy wants from me. What is it that he wants now from me? Um, and so later on, it became to me obvious about exactly what happened here, how this and that. Now, the gentleman I am talking about, the gentleman who dated, it's very important for me to declare my sister, he didn't date one. He's got actually a good looking lady at home maybe i i think i am not sure there was another roma guy that uh, i actually i understand i probably really was interested in his wife and then he married her whatever um under mk ultra um i i don't know this guy i have no idea i would have to see what wife i mean um, but yeah, he's got younger wife and children and everything he has. I mean, he's got a family life. But on the side, you know, it's like Mr. Berlusconi would say, it was some bunga bunga party that basically went on. I understand he gave her authorization, the right also, to give me this kind of stuff. But I also want him to understand that my sister was discriminatory toward the Roma minority her entire life before she actually met him. So just take this as a news for you. Um, this isn't because of 2006. This is way before, it goes way back in time uh, when I was young, uh, these people, none of these people appreciated really Roma minority. 
uh, there was somebody to watch after and keep them on a distance as far as possible. That's all there is to it. So that's not going to be some kind of confusion about um, as per... It's just strange that the person like this all of a sudden is in a completely different role. And the transition she makes does not explain to you like in real life as a normally issue would be, you don't get to see it, but all of a sudden she is screwing with somebody uh, that is uh, and engaging also in torture. My sister engaged with the niece in a heavy torture with her, her co-workers, in a heavy abuse. This police guy, this Roma police officer, I don't think so. I, I think that he would be more of a, I think that she would have more of that influence on him as far as violence than what he would want. I don't think that he was actually, they, these people were motivated in that stuff. You don't get them like this. You had to motivate them into something like this. It didn't make them no fucking sense. One time when I was subjected to anti-ultra with the Roma minority, I think it was probably a Jobiak, I think. I don't know. Was it Jobiak? Was it here in a torture? But the guy, the guy said, you, you are fucking lying. He said that he's drugged up, you know, a Roma guy. And he said, the other guy said, no, I'm not lying. He's drugged up. He doesn't know he's drugged up. Uh, and he said, we're going to see about if he is really, really drugged up. And he went and he punched me in the stomach as hard as he possibly could. Uh, and after I was catching breath and stood up, they finally believed the, the group of Roma people that I was drugged up because they couldn't understand how the fuck is that possible. They were completely in shock and scared too when they saw that shit then they, they realize and i'm not really sure what the fuck happened did they go home uh to pray over there uh for their lives or what exactly happened but this shit left to a lot of people a lot of psychological damage this stuff that you can do with a person like this that you see a person like this in front of you this is not even easy shit to deal with even for the one that has control uh, over an individual that is drugged up. For usually, the people that drug somebody up are, like they say in Serbo-Croat language, kriumichari, criminals, basically the people that, but in this case, Borut Pahorn, Milan Kuchan, Putin, and American government-led criminals, Londonia, they basically legalized they legalized criminality. They basically legalized abductions, hijackings, um, torture. They basically legalized. They had a police that eventually legalized this. It became like a matter of human trafficking, all this shit. It became like, okay, no problem. No problem. So I ask, when are you going to sell your car, hey? She has this old Volkswagen Golf. I say, I ask, do you have someone around you there that is selling his car? Because, of course, at the time I was looking for the car. Uh, Gol from Martina that was selling, that was a great opportunity, that's crazy, that car was just really expensive, Martina was her a co-worker that would come here right inside of this room and was just displaying tremendous violence, uh, I don't know, was it necessary for her retirement, I don't know what the problem was, but she was as violent as very few people. 
And uh, that was one of the first leads the sister gave me because Martina, her co-worker, brainwashed me on this uh, car she's going to be selling in the future. Uh, and she even told me under MK Ultra, but you're probably not going to have enough money. So, no, I would not have 2,000 euros. So that was not within the reach uh, for someone in a budget of 500 euros. So, yeah, that much about that. Just to remind, they reminded us when I came back from Poland with a barrage of violence. Uh, they reminded with the violence uh, whenever they possibly could, wherever they could. Okay, so that was a 2,000 uh, euro car. I, I, I don't think I could afford one. Here, hello, hello, waiter comes. What would you like? I don't know. My sister took uh, coffee, whatever she took. I asked only for a green tea, that's all. Okay, that was an expensive car, I tell my sister. She says the same like mine, she says. Um, we still talk about the car, talk about the kilometers. That was a, just a low mileage car, 2,000 euros. I told my sister, first I'm going to go look for the work, then I'll go and uh, buy myself a car, you know. Uh, that was at least the plan I had. Uh, the plan was normal. The plan was to get the job. And I did send a bunch of applications out uh, just basically to waste the time. And another thing is what the psychiatrists have prepared here for me was meant to actually, according to the words of Peter Kapsch, shut down my mind. I recalled just... <sighs> It came to me yesterday because my papa and my mama uh, came up together with more bullshit. The two were in agreement with one another. Yesterday, my father started to bullshit with the idea that he's not going to take eye drops anymore because it's the eye drops that make him sick. And it's because the eye drops... Uh, it's all audio recorded, all this shit. It's too much shit they came up with. It's the eye drops that a big pharma, a pharmaceutical big pharma is making tremendous money with. Um, 
claiming me also that he was a doctor from Ljubljana who told him, a physician from Ljubljana told him that he doesn't have anything and it's just a mama that is making him sick deliberately to get rid of him. Basically repeating me a scenario from MK Ultra because scenario from MK Ultra was way too uh, something I was familiar with. I told him immediately, I told him, Papa, don't worry. Uh, I don't want you to get sick. I will absolutely, uh, we're going to go to see the doctor you said in Ljubljana that believes these things. We're going to look second and third and fourth and fifth doctor, whatever physician uh, is necessary to prove that your case is real basically so they can see whether it's real or not uh, but in meanwhile because they stated that if you're not going to be mother repeated uh, this with a hyster hysterical way uh, he's not going to be yelling if he's not going to be taking this medication he, he'll go blind that the doctor called basically imitating a psychiatry and imitating exactly my case with a psychiatry with exception that well in my case it was the father that wanted me dead at all costs in my case it was the mama that wanted me dead at all costs in my case my parents declined me the right and have done absolutely everything possible for me not to have professional opinion first professional opinion whether I have what they have labeled me with that's a paranoid schizophrenia so they could destroy me so they could basically lynch me as they did afterwards thanks to United Nations Amnesty International foremost uh, no right to have professional based on professional opinion done analysis where I do suffer from paranoid schizophrenia and according to Slovenian Constitution European Constitution human rights laws opinion from the second psychiatrist that would confirm the first uh, diagnosis as the case should be none of that stuff I had I had only parents that wanted me dead at all costs. There was nothing for me. No help, no shit. In contrary to what they believe I'm going to react in absolutely the same way, I have acted reasonably and I offered Father all the possible help I can give, that I will devote my time, spend my time, take him to the hospital, uh, have him visit physicians. Uh, even I will take one to the country next door, wherever it would take, uh, to find out what exactly goes on. Unlike the case was with my parents. A few days ago, now that was the sickest shit of them all. My father claimed that he bought only two Casio watches. Again, the psychiatrist demanded for him to buy the watch for 210 euros and father started to go in my face with his paper that he won this fucking watch it's a smart watch he doesn't even know uh, actually he's too careless to plug into a smartphone or a regular phone for that matter a charging cord to charge one he's just he doesn't bother with that kind of stuff. He can do everything for a fishing and stuff, but he's too careless, too lazy to pay attention to that kind of stuff. So others have to do that kind of stuff. Uh, smart watch, according to him, from MK Ultra was not even the right choice. And so I figure out what they demanded me to figure out. My poor father, who took a hammer in his hands and slashed the fucking watch that costs 50 euros in pieces, decimated one, uh, just like he decimated my audio recorder, claiming that he has a dementia, uh, came up with idea that he only received one Casio watch. 
claiming that I am fucking crazy, that I have a paranoia when I was asking him about the second watch, if he can bring one, so I could fix the watch. After one hour of search in his room, uh, having arguments with the mother who was in agreement with him, yelling at me instead, treating me like an animal, I did reach inside of his pants pocket and pulled out the second fucking watch the guy had hidden before he came to the table. You know, when he went to pick up the watches. This is this is the bullshit, this is the stuff that we go. Those are expensive watches. You know, each one is like 35 euros, but this is just, this is just co continuous, constant shit that we go on. During the watch occasion, the psychiatrist believed that I would demand him to open the drawer here where he has a weapons, a guns, so that I would have access. And they, they told me they have a cameras everywhere. They told me this shit under MK Ultra, in which opportunity we will record you and stuff like this. Uh, none of that stuff I did. I treated him well, but once he started to insist me that I am paranoid that I'm insane, that he did not buy. That's all in my head, that he did not buy the watch. Uh, two Casio watches, that's basically uh, when I started to ask him certain questions. And finally, I reached in his pocket and pulled out the watch, asking him why. A second day, he stated me in the face that he was the one actually who have given me the watch from his pants. Well, it's fucking audio recorded stuff. Let's continue with this. About the watch about the job in Slovenia, but well, the job in Slovenia uh, is just was the issue that was used to remind me basically where I was tortured. At the same time, no job other than in Grosuplje, uh, about 50 kilometers from here, 60 kilometers from here was offered. Um, what they were doing under MK Ultra also, they also engineered um, what would be meetings. You're going to come on a meeting through your Bayana, we're going to have a meeting, we have a talk for the job and no job for you, basically. Fuck you, you go back. Jobless, you spend mucho money to come to Ljubljana. It's not cheap. It's actually really expensive because you have to pay the toll for the road if you go with a car, otherwise you're going to waste whole fucking day riding on a train, bus, whatever it is, and money, and go home jobless, basically. Because the gentlemen, the ladies and gentlemen, will not have an audio conference uh, through the laptop or something like this. It's not convenient for them. Uh, another specialty uh, when it comes to the job market, also I was not offered the job market, was involvement of Joe Biden and a German Olaf Scholz. I was going to show you a pencil. I I think yeah, I already did. It's like an orange color pencil that Joe Biden left me here and then they would push me this at the link on make sure that you're gonna go there and you're gonna get the job and all of shorts that's a german prime minister now chancellor if you like uh he insisted for the job at grossupli and so on so therefore you're talking about again promotion of the foreign interests of the foreign politicians in my life. Like I said, I leave the United States of America for good the last time in 2009. Before that, in 2006, I know that it would be convenient for Mr. Milan Kuchan and Borut Paho, therefore for Putin, for 
uh, Alexander Vucic for me to depart from Slovenia so they would rip me apart. I know. I understand that shit. I get it. Uh, I know it would be convenient for them uh, for uh, it would be convenient for them for me to lobby for them. Uh, but this never ever was the initial agreement, which I never agreed anyways, anyhow, when I was abducted since 95 from my bed in Miami. Uh, these people ruined my American citizenship, not only Slovenian citizenship. They ruined this country. They turned this country into a dumpster. And there is no need for the local criminals inside of the parliament. There is no need for a president bought at power of Slovenia, Udba people. This is a Belgradian, Moscovian people that are installed in Ljubljana. They, you don't have the right to condition somebody with a foreign interest to the native here in Slovenia. I'm native of Slovenia more than you are. You are no fucking natives. None of the people inside of the parliament today is a native to Slovenia. These are all outsiders. They're all foreigners. They, every one of them is an enemy of this country, of this nation. None of these people who knew about this stuff have come forward, and it's the foreign interests they want to take in account, prioritize, prior, prioritizing over my needs, over my right to be in Slovenia treated like a Slovenian native. It's not okay, this kind of stuff. Of course, the field of employment is of a paramount importance in this case. Oh, one of the things they came up, uh, they came forward with was the idea that I would work at this very restaurant here as a waiter, ladies and gentlemen. Um, educated as a mechanical engineering technician that could actually run easily 10 factories like a General Motors or be a president of the United States of America, multilingual in several languages, I could probably serve local car out with a coffee. Why the fuck not at age 50? That's what the fuck I need after they ruined me 27 of years of life with a torture. Probably the fucking people here, locals, that engage in a torture. Why not? In respect to this place here, a psychiatrist, Peter Kapsch, also didn't forget to fail to mention to me how I'm going to have to be very careful with the orders that it's going to be measured my brain, my mind, to see how much dementia I suffered from. Actually, he meant stress, how much damage, how much psychological harm, how much disrupted, disturbed the circumstances, the environment at home, how much damage they managed to cause. That's basically what he wanted to say, Mr. Peter Kopsch. Uh, through the collecting coffees, basically serving as a waiter at the local restaurant here, something I was actually doing as a boss boy on a five star, uh, providing a five star, star service at age 23 in the United States of America where I immigrated aboard the cruise line Celebrity Meridian on a ship. Which none of this big misters, lazy, good for nothing shitbags, scumbags ever did. They never did any kind of honest work. Not the people inside the Slovenian parliament did. Not the psychiatrist, this scumbag here from, from Nova Mesta or from Ljubljana that actually freeloaded themselves, loaded themselves with the overtime, with the extra hours, stealing a public money, basically, 
going out on a fucking trip to the Novo Mesto, going on a fucking Tokyo, going traveling to New York City or Belgrade or Paris or Moscow or whichever place for free lodging, get a free lodging through this case. You are talking about the professional hochstaplers, like we say in Slovenia, vagabonds, professional criminals with a ties around their necks. And I'm going to go and collect the fucking orders for the coffee at age 50. How nice, see? And that after the spine was broken to me in Poland. Now, that would be wonderful. Eh? <laughs> That's what the Slovenian Hochstaplera is about. My sister wanted to know exactly why I would not work in a hospitality, in a cafe hospitality business. Why? Why would that be? I told her, well, because I've never worked uh, with exception when I was 23 years old overseas at this field of employment. Well, actually, I don't understand why would I have to go to Ljubljana, Grusuplje, I don't know where, where actually I was offered one job interview, uh, one other job interview I was uh, offered to come to Celje and uh, I was offered to come for a job interview in Sevnica in a company from Melania Trump, his father, friend. Uh, and I was offered to come to a job interview to uh, Grosuplie in a company from Olaf Schulz, where Olaf Schulz would go and take orders. Uh, he would stop by. Uh, and be way before he became chancellor, um, it was like a starter, basically, of that company with the locals here. Uh, you know, it's not okay for a regular jobs for employers to take four or five months to answer, uh, three months to answer uh, the job advertisement they advertised uh, give you basically negative you know you you apply you apply you apply you apply and then you get every day you get a no answer no answer every fucking day no answer which again goes into a group of local psychiatrists shit Peter Kopsch who had an idea that the most important is to put me, you know, compel me into a world of depression basically, to choke me as much as possible with everything, you know, with a negative view, so basically to play you down. You know, you could, like you put a boot on somebody and you just push him down in a fucking mud. You just want to kill the motherfucker. You know, put him into depression and push him a fucking antidepressants, cause him a diabetes, cause him obesity, fuck him up at whatever costs. Next to ruining one already, 27 years of life. Something that it would happen in Germany or Austria, they would walk with a chainsaw inside of the parliament and chops the heads off the people like this. It is fucking impossible to even imagine what exactly would have fucking happened with the people inside of the parliament. Probably would have fucking shoot them, put them outside of the parliament and erase them like a fucking grass from its feet for the stuff like this. The state doesn't even have the fucking money. Any kind of country in this world that would come up with a compensation ruining somebody through the torture like this 27 years of life, ladies and gentlemen. They want you to fucking go and do the fucking waiter job over there in Slovenia like this. This is what we have now. Uh, 
Uh, I don't hear this very clearly what it is, uh, but my sister started to use uh, for the Roma minority, gypsies, uh, cigoiners, basically in that sense, the words. I don't know what exactly she's saying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play to you. I'm going to replay the whole thing again to you. I am not, I don't understand what he's saying. Uh, but she started to talk about the cigoiners, about the gypsy, cigani, basically. And I tell her, please do not talk in front of me. Do not use this term, derogatory term for the Roma minority. And next to us, there is this lady with the audio recording, basically recording everything separately. I did not even anticipate the shit is going to happen, because if I would, I wouldn't have a recorder uh, on the wrong side of the table, basically, running. So, but at least I have one on. That's good. She declines my demand uh, after asking her to please use a proper language and refer to the Roma minority as a Roma people, not as the words she is using. And she says no. I tell her, listen, we have uh, bigger problems in Slovenia, uh, especially because of we, we have uh, bigger problems in Slovenia uh, than Romy, so please. She talks about how they are no good, basically how they are scum, how they do crime, that's all they do, and so on and so forth. I explain her uh, nicely that these are the people that are in a certain economical, socio-economical situation in Slovenia. And secondary, I tell her, uh, these are also the people that are mixed and with the Slovenes and with the Croats and with the Bosnian people with all kinds of backgrounds. So this is really not a proper way to refer really to this minority we have in Slovenia. Um, I don't, I cannot hear because she's very quiet what she said. Uh, look, uh, she keeps referring to them basically as a criminals and so on, and I tell her uh, it's because the problem is the problematic is because of the people the way you, because people think the way you think but if the people would think in a different way there wouldn't be no problems she would hear them they are problematic a problem and i don't know what 
Uh, this is something that I have to ongoingly listen from my mother, how they uh, attack people, how they rob people, how they kill people. Uh, it's just uh, boring. Uh, when she is discriminating against this Roma community, she's very, very, very silent. She is trying to uh, hide as much as possible uh, of this uh, talk of hers, basically. And so for that reason, I'm going to go over again right now. I'm going to amplify the whole thing so that maybe we can catch something. But she is very, very, very cautious about this and don't want to be heard. Really knows exactly what I'm doing. And uh, this is the way it goes. does not know what to do anymore to get me in trouble as much as possible yep this is my family this is my sister so you go on a COVID testing you test negative but you can come home with a much much bigger problem after the testing as you go on a coffee or tea with your own sister uh, you can end up actually really in much, much bigger problems. I uh, shut her mouth by telling her uh, for me to blame Roma people for my misfortunes uh, it would be absurd. We have inside of the Slovenian parliament such criminals that world has not seen anything like this yet in the history of existence of one. <laughs> hey, listen, she continues to go on and she keeps talking shit against the Roma people. In a little bit, I'm gonna amplify this and so you can hear, catch uh, a little more about this stuff. But, you know, I don't know how to remove this background, what to do with it to hear this clearly, but. Listen, I thank her for invitation, and uh, I actually need to fucking go. Um, I had enough of this tea, of this uh, meeting with her, to be completely honest, in very short, uh, it, uh, she continues to remind me of somebody, uh, when uh, the conversation goes on, I am not going to continue from here on because it's really worthless to me, but this was an individual that became concerned for me, and because of my stupidity, he started to display the stuff, I would even say Nazi-related stuff, because of my stupidity under MK Ultra. because when the people saw me beaten up and like this, torn apart, people started to do the stuff that otherwise never ever should or would. 
exactly what Milan Kucha and Borat Pahor, Vladimir Putin, uh, the enemies of this people here, this country, uh, people who wanted a special tretma, like we say in Slovenian, a special um, freebies, goodies from the Russian state, like Obama, for instance. Obama, Obama was trying to get a Russian passport. Obama was desperately trying to get a Russian passport. He was just crazy about obtaining a Russian passport, about the possibility of obtaining a Russian passport. So you could have a people like this that would just basically give anything to assist uh, someone so they could get freebies, goodies, uh, even at the cost of completely innocent lives, basically, even at the cost of the Slovenian people that suffered here and they paid tremendous price just so they could get whatever the hell they would want. It was corruption, basically, from all over the place. So that's all there is. She's going to go and talk about somebody else that was involved in this stuff that was a Slovenian that also they have completely dement him, uh, that ended up buying himself some aggressive dog and uh, was stupid enough to start to, rather than to live, do his stuff. You can't, but unless you're blacklisted, basically, care about the stuff you shoot. I think this guy was, he alone was subject to MK Ultra brainwash, started to stalk people with a dog here, uh, and understand, of course, big prey on my own sister's dog with his dog. Now, like I said, my sister complains about her little dog, how dangerous this dog, this guy had a dog, how dangerous this dog he was, that he could grab her dog and this and that, but it was her dog that she trained basically to attack me. It's what she used under MK Ultra also to traumatize me, basically, as a weapon. So we are talking about completely fucked up individual here. My sister, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to go ahead. I'm going to amplify this uh, audio, portion of audio about this Roma people. I did a little bit more. I'm going to amplify one. I will not go and translate this stuff about this guy. Uh, in case I did, left that stuff. A uh, good portion of the audio at this place. When we had a conversation, I simply cut out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you one more time the whole thing. And then I am basically out because I have more videos about stuff like this. And uh, I should say audios. And from my mama and from the people that were coming here inside of the house and from the people from all over the place, I would meet wherever the fuck I would go. Everybody would do just about anything basically to get me talk against the Roma minority, basically incite in discriminative uh, conversation, inciting a hatred basically against the Roma community. So they could rush to Mr. Pahor, to Mr. not only Milan Kuchan, but Mr. Putin, Vladimir Putin and Alexander Vucic, giving them basically a proof of God knows who the fuck. Uh, so they Voila, they would have proved that, you know, I am a racist, uh, I'm a hater. Also, I was going to say Sergei Shoigu, you know, Sergei Shoigu. Uh, I understand he impregnated children, Roma children, in this settlement here called uh, Zabiak. When the truth comes out, the Russians should pay some good money here to the local Roma community, ladies and gentlemen, I am looking forward to even better their situation, uh, which, according to my views, and just because the Russians were so worried about, the Russians were so fucking worried about the Roma community, even that in Russia, uh, Russian people oftentimes don't live as good as this Roma community. Thanks God situation of the Roma community, which was impossible, improved. But in Russia, which was so concerned for the Roma community, 
They were concerned for other people that were involved in MKUltra from the West. They wanted to give impression, and most, they wanted to get under the finger United Nations and Amnesty International because it concerned me. When it comes to money, Russians did not contribute not to this Zhabek, not to this Roma settlement, not to the other settlement, but even a single fucking dime. They were big on demands as per what we should do, what we have to do, what we owe. But they had not contributed all along, not even one fucking dime. Actually, it was a Slovenian economy that had to contribute to the Vladimir Putin, to the Russia. So they, uh, so the Putin would look better. That's all there is. This is this was not about the Russia. That's all there is. Let me play first this portion of the audio first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the whole audio again. So maybe from this audio right now that I have additionally amplified, I can maybe hear something more about what she's saying because it's nothing other than hatred coming out of her mouth. <laughs> Um, I tell the sister finally after she talk about me working in gastronomy that's what basically is work in Gustinstra you know that's work in a cafe stuff like this serving people uh, with a coffee, juice, cake, whatever. Uh, I tell her, listen, my sister compared to myself, my mother, my father, they never worked in their life. These people never worked a single fucking day in their lifetime. When you're gonna go and you're gonna do 20 hours a day like I did at age 23, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, you're going to walk inside of your shoes, soaked with the blood. When you're going to go and you're going to lift like I did at age 48, between 15 and 20 tons of material with your own hands and lift up like this, like I did, without knowing how to release the pressure on the spine, you know, basically designed to break the spine, incited in breaking spine, but being called a racist, sleeping on the floor, even inside of the forest, and reporting yourself every fucking day for the 12 hour shifts. When you're gonna do, and when you're gonna work for free, when you're gonna work for free, basically 27 years, then you come to me and you say, I work like you, I did something in life. When you're gonna go and you're gonna submit 30,000, 40,000 job applications, without the right to employment. Then you come to me and you're gonna say I'm a worker. Otherwise, shut the fuck up about this stuff. Don't preach me about this stuff. Work inside of the gastronomy, inside of the restaurant, inside of the cafe. That's a beautiful fucking job. Everybody should be happy. I would be happy too, all true, of course. Everybody that is educated should pursue his profession he's educated for so you don't lose your credentials, basically. At this point in time, sister, sister uh, says, after I, when I tell her about when I tell her about uh, that the job inside of the uh, restaurant, inside of the cafe is actually a good job. This is a good. It's just the, the stuff is something I haven't done before. Uh, she refers to the Roma people. I suppose that they are lazy. That they are no good with, instead of using the Roma word, gypsies, ciganers, basically. Um, what I ask her to please properly, you, uh, to pay attention to the words she's using in front of me, 
to not refer like this to them. That's what she's complaining about the guy with a dog that would go and keep stalk her with a dog and stuff like this. Uh, that he had a dog, that the dog was aggressive, uh, the dog could possibly also attack her and stuff like this. But she doesn't know anything about, knows nothing about the stuff she had done to me on the Ramke Ultra. She doesn't want to know anything about it. She actually even makes a remark that the guy that was doing this kind of stuff already probably what she means is psychiatry already took care of him. The psychiatry took care of him probably already a long time ago. 
this is not a news. The question only is how much blood is on my sister's hands also in respect to this guy. That's all that's the only question. I am gonna go ahead ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this video I don't like doing the stuff like this uh, this is a violence this is the stuff that normally police should stop by have a seat talk to me about the family members inciting in hatred like this express interest in my field of employment attempts and talk to the people involved including the Peter Kopp psychiatrists Ljubljana psychiatrists uh, about why this stuff was necessary talk to Milan Kuch and talk to Borut Pahor about this stuff what exactly they were trying to accomplish in this case but as I stated inside of the Slovenian Parliament we do have a people that I don't actually even understand what the fuck we have these people other than to have a good day coffee, free coffee, free this, free that. As I stated, a lot of years they traveled at estate expenses, left and right, back and forth, uh, are purchasing weaponry and giving, basically exchanging the secrets of this weaponry uh, that basically they're buying the weaponry on behalf of Russia it's actually the Russia that writes what is necessary to purchase Slovenia is one of the countries that if you sell to one weaponry you sell the weaponry secrets the secrets of this weaponry to the Russia it's the Russia that gets absolutely everything the blueprint everything or whatever whatever they need to get if they cannot get some other way it's a strange stuff slovenia is buying i am surprised with the type of weaponry choice of weaponry slovenia is buying from their partners and it appears to me that there is somebody else who eventually who has uh, a need for the type of the weaponry i don't actually know how even this kind of weaponry, how you would apply one uh, for the sake of in, uh, territorial integrity uh, of Slovenia. I am, I am just uh, puzzled with these orders. And it was the case like this, and the weapons from Israel and the weapons from elsewhere, that they acquire the stuff like this whenever they get the order, uh, either from Serbia or from Russia. They get idea they supply them they see what they want and then they basically they choose what they want and voila there you have it this is not poland this is definitely not ukraine so whatever you sell to slovenia it's going east it's going to the serbia it's going to the russia just for you to know to the belarus and so on for you to know this i don't have anything else to say about this i'm angry I don't like doing this kind of videos. Um, I don't actually understand how the family can do something like this to someone, how they can commit themselves to crime uh, to degree, as was in my case. Uh, but, like somebody said, so that we would not uh, theorizes too much shit happens and so what life goes on uh, it happens to everyone it just uh, depends on how we see one and so that's all there is to it uh, life gotta go on we gotta do best to our abilities what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you uh, one more time this audio recording actually even better since I'm gonna burn this movie I'm going to include this original recording. So for those of you, if you're an investigator, if you're a police officer, 
you can go ahead and you can analyze and you can you can have original audio recording and you can sit with her and you can ask her questions what exactly she meant at this restaurant in a public place referring to the people like this so uh about it because i know she too was recording don't worry about it. everybody's recording about this stuff uh what exactly was she hoping she's gonna get what kind of feedback from me uh and finding out exactly from her mouth how long was she engaging in a torture like i said for the sake of her niece since 1998 100% she was at first not interested she was in between she was confused then she took the side of her niece against me who by the way whom psychiatrists have a knowledge is a mentally ill and did not know even how to reverse her mental status in 95 96 97 98 because she was chronically mentally ill every time she would see me whenever they would bring me she would just throw herself on me so this is the job for the police to find out if this police ever is going to act in any way but also the job for the international community such as united nations which should investigate boss antonio guterres and world health organization boss tedros adhanom ghebreyesus thank you for watching this video till next time the only thing you're going to do is uh you, you if you want i am going to repeat all this recording in Slovenian language uh, the whole thing so for those of you that understand Slovenian language you can uh, you can listen with your own ears there was a lot of philosophy about this Roma community blah 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 how they have used one misused one and this and that like I said the most vulnerable people are the ones that usually fell on the tracks together with the women uh, and definitely when it comes to my sister and my mother, I never would do anything like this. But, you know, when I think about degree of crime that is not new to me, degree that accompanied me throughout my life, even that mother ended MK Ultra with the words to me, I'm going to do the stuff like this and this and this and this so you can record. And then they're going to come and they're going to help you out. And once they save you, then you can go and you can save me, fuck them and this and that. Listen, this would be a really, this would be a true, uh, this would be an option. Except with exception uh, that if she wasn't doing this shit all her entire life, basically, since I was a child. Unfortunately for her, she did me myself and father we she used to refer to us as the vipers gadje modrasi uh in me she have seen <sighs> she referred as a really really strange when i was younger chade uh chade was the name she gave me the name chade I don't even understand what exactly she meant by this. Psychiatrists, when they talked to her, couldn't understand what the fuck she is talking about. Chade. Chade. Is this a person from Chad, from Africa? Or was she meant by like a Chade, like somebody that is like a bobo, like completely uh, demented? Uh, she referred to me as a turtle claim that I have a neck, that I have a neck like a turtle. Yeah, she saw in me a turtle. A psychiatrist, as I stated, and she had another vocab vocabulary that is like this fucking long, strange, to the degree that psychiatrists alone couldn't understand what she was talking about. Now, I'm sure I was not that fucking evil when I was 10 years old, when I was 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on when she was using this kind of expressions on me grab me for the hair and pulling my hair to the degree that she would have a whole uh like you know this is slovenian stroke uh, of hair if you pull from the corn and you have this hair uh in her hands basically stuff like this uh i don't know anything about breaking basically sticks uh or a cooking for the cooking on somebody's ass and stuff like this uh like 
she also did next to father. So I, when I would go to the school, uh, I was actually, I was ashamed to take the fucking pants down so the children would not see what my parents are doing with me. Thanks for watching this video. Till the next time. Bye bye. It's going to be other audios like this. It's going to be all about the Roma. Roma this, Roma that. It's going to be about uh, from other people. Uh, and the only thing I'm going to say is it's just going to be a translation. And I will refer to this video for a little bit bigger explanation about the whole thing, about who, how, why, this and that. Okay? So that's all. That's why I take to the certain issue when I start to discuss one, because so many different issues, a little bit wider approach. And once I get that job done, I do that no more. I just concern with the translations. Tick, 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 tick. So you're just going to see, uh, you know, uh, incitement in hatred against the Roma people by such and such. And da -da 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 -da. that's all there is, translation. That's all there is. No more like I did for this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time. <laughs> Ne, <laughs> <laughs> Vi hoppar det som kopiela. Ja. Vi ska ta en liten Ja, 
Nie, to jest taka szupa na gowar, szupa resz na gowar, to jest resz, 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 to było tu. Nie są żelizy już robione. Jak przymierzę, że ci są ludzie, ci są wydobywane w socjalnym zależaniu, ci ludzie, które do tego tego, że to są ludzie, ci są Mesem i jen želitni i tudi komentarni, da je dano iz Bosne, iz Hrvatske, iz Slovenije, od tega je tam nekaj tukaj. Ni treba tu, ni treba za tega, za tukaj. Ja, no, se ti ti pravim. Ja, no, nisam ne. Ti so naši romi, pa vse. Ja, no, se. On može niti bliste, kako... Ja, što najbolje, no. Najbolj je zlom, pa najbolj je srčio, pa kaj pa. Ja, tak nisem lej. Tego pa si dala, in za tega ne si dala. Ti ti zvikli za tega ne si dala, da je tu. Tako, zame v tem, da tu, ki ti niso, začina se hrbiti na njih. Se bi pa drugače nisani, bi pa tudi tega problema ne bi bilo. Potem bi imel problem tisto, ki prej spremenjajo tiste kapce. Tisto bi se bolj razvrl poviril. Je pa tisto kasa na zavod, ki je tukaj rabe za zato skorizno. Zdaj se ni zmeril. Rovno na merku. Rovno so tu, so tu za mene. Jaz rovno ne vam ga problemo, ne smo moj nekaj ga nekaj. To je najmanj, ko so najmanj naredi v svojo, da se bi rovni. To je absurd, da bi je rovni. Tu so te rovni. To je res tako in deta nas v Sloveniji, da ne ve, jaz tega pa ne ve. Ja smo ska pa bo se po vsak dan dve ure četala za ta dan. Če da bi bo pa jaz bilo. Ne, tu. 
Ik heb mijn eerste woord. Ik heb ook het ding. Wat ik hier is, kom ik daar voor je. Ik ga voor mannen met die werk zijn. Ik ga hier voor mij, ik ga hier voor mij. 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 Ik ga hier Ah, yeah, it's so rare. Oh, it's so true. Ah, I'm positive. I'm positive on that. Yeah, no, so so the fact that they're going to see it, no. Ja, dat is het. Ja, dat is het. Ja, dat Ja, Ik ga het even kijken. Ik ga